Hey, I'm Brandon Vaught, the content director at Word on Fire Catholic Ministries, and I'm here with Bishop Robert Barron. Bishop Barron, good to be chatting with you. Brandon, always good to be with you. Robert Barron. Really, Robert Barron. <laughs> Let's start off with this, uh, a general question. What was your initial reaction when you first heard about the McCarrick news and then about the Pennsylvania grand jury report? Well, it was, you know, one of, of, of shock and dismay and depression and, uh, um, you know, what other negative words I could possibly summon. I think with the Pennsylvania report, you know, certainly we had known about sexual abuse by clergy going back, uh, you know, many decades, but some of the, the, gross and terrible details that came forward were just stomach turning. And, uh, you know, I, I don't hesitate to say that there was really a demonic element that you see in these things. So that's what struck me in the, in that awful Pennsylvania report. Um, the McCarrick situation, that the abuse was going on at such a high level, the corruption to reach that part of the church's life. I also was struck by um, the similarity to a lot of the Me Too stuff, because not only was it a sexual assault, it was certainly that, but also a terrible abuse of power. So these these young men who, who wanted the priesthood, and this was this was the man that could could give it to them or deny it of them, and um, you know so it was a terrible abuse of, of of power and authority. So there was some of the the novelty or that some of the different texture I think in these two um, cases. If you guys don't know who Robert Barron is, you should know by now that, of course, he is a YouTuber who is part of the Catholic Church who is going to give us another homophobic response to the pedophile problem that is the Catholic Church. Now, I know the first instinct for a lot of people, and I'm sure you share it, is what are we going to do? We want to take action to not only bring justice to these situations, but to make sure they don't happen again. And we're going to discuss what we can do here in just a moment. But before we do, I wanted to ask you about how important it is to keep the focus on the victims of these egregious crimes and to, to call them what they are. They're not just boundary violations. You know, there's something more specific and serious. Talk about that need. Robert basically goes on blaming a whole bunch of things except for the Catholic Church itself. For some reason, the deflectioning going on here by Robert reminds me of the neo-Nazis saying, Oh, we're not Nazis. We're not racist. All we are is just people wearing Nazi flags and saying Hitler didn't do anything wrong. But we're actually racist and Nazis as well. Fucking bullshit. I know you're a student of church history. You're familiar with the long history of problems and scandals in the Catholic Church. How do you see this crisis comparing to past crises? It's the worst in our history, meaning American Catholic Church history, for sure. No, again, this is not a secluded event just happening in Pennsylvania. This is something happening all over the world. May I remind you of the 4,444 victims in Australia? I know the first instinct for a lot of people, and I'm sure you share it, is what are we going to do? We want to take action to not only bring justice to these situations, but to make sure they don't happen again. And we're going to discuss what we can do here in just a moment. But before we do, I wanted to ask you about how important it is to keep the focus on the victims of these egregious crimes and to, to call them what they are. They're not just boundary violations. You know, there's something more specific and serious. Talk about that need. One problem the Catholic Church does not care about the victims. That's why we cannot trust the Catholic Church and why we have to trust the legal authorities, even though right now they seem to be very much untrustworthy with Donald Trump in office. What's your take on the suggestion that many people have made that at the root of all of these problems is clericalism? What's your take on that? Well, I mean, look, anything as, as complex as this phenomenon, it has multiple causes. I mean, so it's one of the fallacies in logic we talk about is the fallacy of, of you know, single causality. Almost every event has, has multiple causes. I don't hesitate for a minute to say clericalism is one of the causes, by which I mean um, this terrible abuse of privilege and power. See, this is the big problem. 
They go on about clericalism, but they don't acknowledge the fact that the Catholic Church says priest must be celibate, and celibacy is one of the problems. Clericalism, eh, it could be, but oh no, I don't really know. Although, who cares about clericalism anyways? But I also go back to you know what Richard John Newhouse said many years ago at the first wave of this crisis. The three causes of this problem are infidelity, infidelity, and infidelity. So certainly, uh, lack of faithfulness to one's priestly vows, one's priestly identity is, is absolutely basic. Is homosexuality something we should mention? Yeah, sure. I think 80% of these cases involve male-on-male -male, uh, sexual assault. Now, he then says, of course, the priest should turn back to the very same thing that is causing the whole issue of why priests are sexually repressed and instead blames the sexual abuse on homosexual priests by stating data that cannot be falsifiable. If you are a priest who is not a pedophile who is in the Catholic Church, you should drop the vowels and leave the Catholic Church. If you like my video on Robert, you can give it a thumbs up and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Thank you.